Early this morning, though, we did get an update from the Israeli government providing uh, really their latest statements and comments as that ceasefire ended. I want to turn now to the Israeli government spokesperson uh, who spoke in Tel Aviv earlier this morning. First an update and then your questions. This morning, after a seven-day hostage release pause, having failed to provide a list of more hostages for release, the Hamas Army of Terror in the Gaza Strip violated the terms of the agreed framework and launched rocket fire at Israeli communities. At 5.43 a.m., Hamas fired the first rocket from Gaza, and that rocket fire has since intensified, with sirens blaring across southern Israel all morning, including in communities that are still under mandatory evacuation orders, and in those kibbutzim ethnically cleansed by Hamas during its campaign of systematic extermination. On October 7th, we take note of UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres' statement expressing deep regret that military operations have resumed. And indeed, we too regret that Hamas has chosen to resume those operations in violation of the agreement stopping returning our hostages. As we have consistently stated from the very beginning, Israel's goal is to get all of the hostages back. There will be no one left behind. The hostage release pause could have been extended to get more hostages out, and the government of Israel had already approved a sufficient list of Palestinian violent criminals in Israeli jails to proceed with an exchange for at least another two days. Unfortunately, Hamas decided to terminate the pause by failing to release all the kidnapped women as it was obligated to do so, and kidnapped children, and by resuming rocket fire. The perpetrators of the October 7th massacre have decided to hold on to the hostages they brutally abducted in violation of humanitarian law and every norm of humanity. Having chosen to hold on to our women, Hamas will now take the mother of all thumpings. As of now, after Hamas violated the framework for a pause in the fighting, hostilities have resumed and the IDF has resumed combat against the Hamas army of terror in the Gaza Strip. The state of Israel, government, army and society is committed to the two goals of this war which Hamas launched on October 7th, releasing all the hostages and eliminating Hamas so that the Gaza Strip can never again pose a threat to the people of Israel. Following Hamas's violation of the framework, IDF fighter jets have been striking Hamas terror targets in the Gaza Strip. The government of Israel is firmly committed to the return of all the hostages and missing persons. There will be no one left behind. Last night, Israel welcomed home eight of our citizens. They are as follows. Shani Goren, 29. Nili Margalit, 41. Ilana Grzezetsky Kimchi, 30. Sapir Cohen, 29. Mia Shem, 21. Amit Susana, 40. And Bedouin Israeli brother and sister Bilal, 18, and Aisha Ziadne, who were not paraded in front of baying crowds on their way to the Red Cross, like the Jewish hostages were. As Hamas resumes its war against the Israeli people, it still holds 137 hostages from the October 7th massacre, in yeah. addition to four hostages and MIAs from before this war. Those hostages include two children, Ariel and Kfir Bibas, aged four and 10 months, respectively. Two children Hamas now claims are dead. Yesterday, the Hamas monsters released a sick, depraved, and utterly twisted propaganda video of those poor children's father in captivity, crying about the apparent deaths of his wife and two darling children. And if anyone thinks that Israel is going to allow Hamas's sadistic evil to stalk this earth a day longer after this war, they underestimate the power of our humanity. Those 137 hostages still in the Gaza Strip include 117 males, not men, because they include the two little Bibas children, and 20 females. 126 are Israelis and 11 are foreign nationals. That includes eight Thai nationals, one Nepalese citizen, one Tanzanian, and one French Mexican. 10 of the remaining hostages are aged 75 or older, and 56 days, day 56 after the October 7th massacre, there are also still seven missing persons.
Thus far, Israel's military pressure on Hamas has succeeded in securing the release of 110 hostages. 86 of them are Israelis, 24 are foreign nationals. There are also two hostages who were murdered and their bodies subsequently located by IDF forces during ground operations in Gaza. As Hamas terminates the hostage release pause, news continues to emerge about its serial and sadistic abuse of Israeli hostages in captivity, both psychological, torture, and physical abuse. We now know from the family of Yagil and Or Yaakov, aged 12 and 16 respectively, that Hamas drugged our children and branded them like cattle with burns from motorcycle exhaust pipes in order to identify them in case they tried to escape. And Mia Shem, aged 21, her family saying her hand injury was operated on by a vet. Hamas treated our people worse than animals, and we will put Hamas down. Yesterday, the Prime Minister met with our friend U.S. Secretary of State, Antony Blinken. Our American allies have firmly and vocally supported our right and obligation of self-defense in response to the October 7th massacre, and we remain in full agreement on the need to continue this campaign to get our hostages back, eliminate Hamas, and create a new reality in Gaza that ensures that the territory can never again be used to commit attacks against the Israeli people. Like our American allies, we too want to make every effort and are making every effort to minimize civilian casualties in this war that Hamas declared and to expedite the delivery of humanitarian aid for the people of Gaza. As of now, as Hamas resumes hostilities, the IDF is providing information to Palestinian uh, civilians in the Gaza Strip on movement for their safety in the next stage of the war that Hamas has resumed, including taking note of the evacuation areas. We are determined to continue thwarting Hamas's sick strategy of human shields, having spent the last 16 years deliberately embedding its military infrastructure under homes, mosques, schools, and hospitals, and trying to keep civilians in harm's way in order to evade justice. The IDF has been sending messages and announcements to the people of Gaza, calling on them to evacuate from specific areas that are being used by Hamas for terrorist activities in the areas of what are, of course, legitimate military targets that will be destroyed in response to the October 7th massacre as Hamas continues to vow another October 7th. The IDF has published an evacuation zone map in Gaza and we urge uninvolved civilians to evacuate along the designated routes away from the specific areas of Hamas terror activity for their own safety. That interactive map can be found on the IDF website and the details are by now familiar to the people of the Gaza Strip. Hamas continues to make every effort to maximize civilian casualties inside Israel and on their own side. We are doing our utmost to minimize those casualties in accordance with the principles of international law. We will continue to uphold all our obligations under international law and to insist to the last inch on our rights. This war will end with the end of Hamas. We'll now take your questions. Thank you. Question from uh, Jim Williams, Zenger International News Service, Washington. Last night, a news conference that uh, the US Secretary of State Blinken confirmed that International Red Cross visiting the hostages was part of the deal between Israel, US, Egypt and Qatar. Why haven't they seen the hostages? We are demanding, of course, in accordance with the framework, that Hamas grant access to the Red Cross to visit the hostages in accordance with every principle of humanity. We're talking about people who were brutally abducted on October 7th, are being held incommunicado, some with serious injuries. We saw Mia Shem being operated on by a vet, one hostage returning with bullet holes still in her, bullet uh, wounds still in her leg. 50 uh, days after the October 7th massacre, an 84-year-old hostage brought back in a critical condition. Hamas continues to hold our hostages uh, incommunicado without basic humanitarian mercy. We welcome the call from the UN Secretary General that the, U that the Red Cross must be granted access 
to those hostages immediately and unconditionally. And as we said yesterday and have been saying consistently, we expect the United Nations and all international agencies to continue, no, not to continue, I'm sorry, to start putting pressure on Hamas to give the Red Cross access to those hostages uh, while those agencies continue to cover up and deny Hamas's abuse of protected humanitarian facilities for military purposes, while those agencies continue to provide cover for Hamas's ongoing and severe violations of humanitarian law. It is time for that cover-up to stop and for the United Nations to put serious pressure, any pressure, on Hamas and its supporters to grant the Red Cross access to those hostages so the 100 and 37 remaining hostages in the Gaza Strip can be given that basic humanitarian mercy until they are released immediately and unconditionally as we are demanding. Uh, next question from Coach Winehouse, Globe Banner. In responding to US pressure, what would prevent Israel committing to allow limited number of Gazan non-combatants back to the north in a safe zone when the north is, is secured? The northern Gaza Strip at the moment is still an active War zone. The IDF is continuing with its operations now to totally eliminate Hamas military infrastructure. And we expect that when the fighting stops and it is safe for people to be able to return, they will return and we will begin a process of reconstruction together with the international community. But critically, this time a process of reconstruction that ensures that the concrete goes to people's houses and not to the sorts of military tunnels that we have been exposing under the Shifa hospital. Reconstruction that makes sure pipelines for water go to connecting water infrastructure and are not converted into rockets to be used against Israeli civilians as Hamas has proudly documented in its own propaganda videos. Question from Julia Frankel, Associated Press. The military appears to be preparing to evacuate parts of, the su of southern Gaza. Where are people who are ordered to evacuate to southern Gaza supposed to go? Even uh, given that the north is nearly uninhabitable, and the specified safe zone of Al Masawi is too small for thousands of evacuees. Have other safe zones been developed? If so, what are the names of these zones? I would refer you to the most authoritative answer, which is the evacuation zone map that the IDF has published, including the specific evacuation routes. Uh, that was released in a press statement by the IDF a few hours ago, including a link to an interactive map on their website, and I hope that that will answer your question satisfactorily. Question from Howard Goller from Reuters. What is your response to the Biden administration informing Israel that Washington will impose visa bans in the next few weeks on Israeli extremist settlers engaged in violence against Palestinian civilians in the occupied West Bank? We have no comment on that. Of course, we also firmly condemn any vigilantism or hooliganism or attempt by uh, individual extremists to take the law into their own hands. There is absolutely no room for that, and that must be answered very firmly by Israeli law enforcement. We appear to have a problem with uh, our microphone, so I will continue uh, like this. Do we have any other questions, please? Yes. IDF has published, published a map uh, showing Gaza as hundreds of zones that people of Gaza may leave the uh, specific areas before the strike. Please share some details like how it will work, how much time will be given uh, to the local residents. As I hope everyone is familiar by now, uh, since the encirclement of Gaza City in response to the October 7th massacre, uh, Israel has been facilitating humanitarian corridors for the people of Gaza to evacuate to safety. Those humanitarian corridors, of course, attacked by Hamas terrorists trying to stop civilians from evacuating in order to continue using them as human shields. That is a core part of their strategy. The Israeli army in northern Gaza also put in place uh, specific tactical pauses in order to encourage evacuations. That is what the Israeli army has been doing to date in order to facilitate those evacuations. And as the war now resumes, as hostilities resume with Hamas's decision to terminate the hostage release pause and violate the terms of the agreement, you can see on the IDF website 
website the map of the specific evacuation areas and the evacuation routes, and I think the IDF uh, has already proven in the last few weeks the efforts that it has been making in order to get civilians out of harm's way. It's important to understand Hamas has a deliberate strategy of keeping civilians in harm's way so that it can sacrifice them, so that it can martyr them. These are awful words, and they are not our words. They are Hamas's own words. It is a sick and twisted strategy that violates every principle of humanitarian law and humanity, and it is a strategy that we are trying to thwart by getting civilians out of harm's way, because this is not a war against the Palestinians. This is not a war against the people of Gaza. This is a war against Hamas, which launched this war with the October 7th massacre and is trying to fight this war from behind women and children. We're trying to get out of harm's way. Hazel Ward, AFP, we're hearing that President Herzog left uh, the COP talks, uh, COP, without giving his scheduled speech uh, and explain, please can you explain why? I'm not familiar with that and I would refer your question to the press office at the office of the President, uh, not the Government of Israel. Thank you. These are separate branches of government. Question from uh, Pesach Ben Sion. Uh, according to a Saudi media report, Israel struck a Houthi missile UAV depot in Sana yesterday. Can you confirm or deny the report? We have no comment on this report at this stage. Okay, I think that brings us to a close. Okay, thank you very much, everyone. Shabbat shalom, and let's hope for a peaceful... For sort of taking it in just from being a lawyer and... All right, that was the latest update there out of Israel from early this morning as that ceasefire comes to a close.